Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, aka G Lauren 33. I am back here today with a live reaction and review for Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 75 titled A God of Destruction's Power. This is a huge chapter. If you guys remember, at the end of last month, Chapter 74, we got the reveal of Vegeta's new God of Destruction form. And here we are now with Chapter 75. And this is a showcase of Vegeta's new power. And how would Granola respond? And like I always do, I always do a quick read-through of the chapter before I turn the camera on and we do the review and reaction. And I'm going to say this. One, the first thing I'll say is is that especially with Dragon Ball fans and Vegeta fans, some of you guys are idiots. I'm just going to say it right away. Some of you guys are actually idiots, right? And I don't like being negative, but I say this every fucking month. I say this every month. Do not overreact to the leaks and the spoilers. Yesterday, I did a video talking about, you know, how it appeared that Vegeta had lost to Granola once again, one chapter into getting his new form, right? But I also said, let's wait till we get the full chapter to understand the full context of what happened, right? Of what happened and why Vegeta potentially lost, you know? I'm going to say this, everybody that overreacted and had temper tantrums and was going off saying how they're going to drop the DBS manga and all this other stuff, right? You guys are all idiots, all of you guys, because if you read this chapter, Vegeta really didn't even lose. The battle's not even over yet, and we're going to talk about that and everything else like we always do. But a lot of you guys are idiots because I say this every month, not this just chapter, but every month I tell you guys. Do not overreact to the leaks and spoilers. Wait till we have the full chapter so we can actually understand what's going on. It's not fair to Toritaro or Toriyama or anybody else that works on manga for people to send them death threats and to be saying all this utter nonsense, right, when you don't even have the full chapter to understand. You should even be doing that regardless. It's a manga, all right? It's comics at the end of the day. We read this for our entertainment and enjoyment, but... It's 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 not fair to a worse extent when you when you don't even have the full product and you're you're judging it. Now you always know the store uh the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. That you can apply that to the manga spoilers. You know, here we have the full chapter, and if you don't like it, right, you know, you, you want to critique it and you say, Oh, Toriyama Toritaro need to do this better, that's fine. But at least read the full chapter before judging it. Because Vegeta didn't even really lose. But people were all mad all day on Twitter based off one leak that was posted by one guy in the community. Like, come on. Come on. So I'm just going to tell, for all you guys that were going off about Vegeta on Twitter, right? I'm just going to say, a lot of you guys are idiots. A lot of you guys are idiots. I don't have a problem saying that, man. Like, get your head out of your ass. Come on. But... You know, this chapter does feature the battle between uh, Vegeta and Granola and Vegeta's new God of Destruction 4. And I also say the second thing I wanted to say, I wanted to say two things. Second thing, I think this was the best chapter of the arc so far, in my opinion. And I'm saying that as a Goku fan. I love Vegeta. You know, I love Dragon Ball. I love Vegeta. But as a Goku fan, I think this was the best chapter of the arc. You know, especially since this battle started, the chapters have gotten progressively better, right? The battle with Goku, you know, uh, and then, you know, last chapter with Vegeta going up against Granoa. I think this was the best chapter of this arc. You know, the art is great. The paneling, some of the storytelling, I really did enjoy this chapter. I think this was the best chapter of this arc so far. I feel like this arc is only going to get better and better. The, you know, some people can, can complain about the slow pacing, but I feel like the slow pacing of this battle and this arc is being done perfectly, actually. You know, it's making it actually way more enjoyable, and I cannot wait to see this animated whenever the Dragon Ball Super anime comes back. I'll say this right now. This Vegeta vs. Granola is a, bad, is a better battle than Ultra Instinct Goku vs. Granola. And maybe that's because Goku wasn't going full out. Because Goku was not using his full power in uh, Silver UI, in my opinion. All right? Plus, you know, Granola was not going full power. Plus, Granola was using a clone. 
You know, so definitely the circumstances were different with the battle Vegeta had with Granola and the battle Goku had with Granola. But still, if I'm being honest, right, in my honest opinion, I think Vegeta versus Granola is a better battle than Goku and Granola was. But let's get into the chapter. I know you guys are waiting patiently, so let's get into it finally. A God of Destruction's power. So let's do it. So basically, if you guys saw my early draft pages, right, these first six, seven pages we've already seen. Now we're just seeing it in uh, HD quality, uh, fully complete. So uh, uh, your power is unbounded. What does that mean? Right. It's continuation of what we saw last chapter. We see Vegeta power up and then you got the nice flame aura. You got the flame aura, you know, surrounding Granola. Then we see Vegeta, just like he did the Goku Black in the anime. He grabs Granola uh, by his outfit. And then he's like, your head's gotten too big. It's time to take you down a peg. Get ready for a dose of my tough love, right? So Vegeta's saying, oh, Granola, you've got it too cocky. You're letting that power of the strongest, you know, get to your head. It's time for somebody to, you know, humble you a little bit. So we see Vegeta, he headbutts Granola, and then he throws him. Then he hits him with an axe handle, and then he hits him with a bicycle kick. You guys have actually seen these images. If you guys have watched every one of my videos, right, covering the spoilers and everything, we've seen these panels multiple times already. So we see uh, Granola. So now we're getting right to all the new stuff, right? We're getting to the end of the early draft pages into all the new stuff for this chapter. And like I said, this was a great chapter in my opinion. So we see Granola. He's going for uh, some finger blast, right? Uh, but Vegeta's too fast for him, and he hits him in the back. Granola comes up uh, immediately recovering, and he's actually able to hit Vegeta in the chest. Clearly, Granola is aiming for Vegeta's vital point, right? And we know that right now, Vegeta's most weakened. And you can see he actually is bleeding here because of, you know, Granola's hitting him in his vital point. Granola, remember, Granola hit Vegeta in the stomach last chapter, breaking a part of his armor. So Granola is clearly aiming for that spot because he knows if he hits Vegeta's vital points enough, Vegeta will be defeated quickly. That's how Granola was able to defeat Goku, even though Goku had his guard down. But Anyway, so uh, Vegeta says, the hotter my battle soul burns, the stronger I go. And I'm going to do a video probably in the next coming days talking about Vegeta's God of Destruction power and try to explain it a little bit because we do get an official name for it and we'll talk about that in a little bit and uh, I feel like it's very interesting the differences between Vegeta's new form and Goku's new form so I would watch out for that video hopefully later this week guys uh, but we see uh, we see Vegeta he says the harder my battle soul burns the stronger I grow and now uh, and now we're getting into the new stuff. And I really love, I really love. This will get some text message I'm getting. Anyway, I really love how the battle transitions into the actual city. Like I said, I love when Dragon Ball has these unique environments for its battles, right? Like last chapter, most of Vegeta versus Granola took place uh, in the sea. Right in the sea, and like it took place in an ocean, a river, a lake. You know, Goku versus Granola took place in the forest and up in the mountains. So, I really do love the environmental changes that you know this battle has, and it's all taking place on one planet. Because you got, I hate when Dragon Ball relies on the barren wasteland, like on the earth. I'm really hoping that when we get the Dragon Ball Super movie in uh next year i really hope we don't see that battle take place in a barren wasteland i i love that the broly battle had unique environmental changes as goku vegeta fought broly and i'm really hoping we get that for the dbs uh superhero movie and when this arc eventually gets adapted i cannot wait to see you know the environmental changes because that makes this you know much more enjoyable or enjoy uh, enjoyable so we see Vegeta, he grabs Granola by the head. And like I said uh, last month, it seems that Vegeta's fighting style gets way more aggressive the more he gets used to this form, right? Because some of these moves you don't really typically see Vegeta do, 
uh, in a normal battle, right? In Super, you know, Vegeta's fighting very aggressively here. You see he grabs Granola by the head and, you know, he powers up and he throws him backwards into the city. You can see all the damage that the city is taking. And you see Granola ends up along a old city wall and Vegeta hits him with a huge kick. Look at the, look at the damage uh, that Granola takes. That's a huge kick to the stomach. Loving that. So you see Vegeta got that smile on his face. And I'll say this. I love Vegeta's new form now. I love it. I told you guys last month I was not going to judge Vegeta's form until we saw it this chapter. You know, because we've never seen Vegeta without eyebrows before. Right? This is something new. So I was like, okay, let's see how Toritaro draws Vegeta next chapter. And let's see how it looks. And I got to say... I love Vegeta's new form. It fits him perfectly. The no eyebrows look. You know, he kind of got the hair down a little bit in the back, right? And even though we don't have the official colors yet, you know, no matter if it's purple or it's like dark black with highlights or whatever, whatever the colors is, man, I, it's going to look even better once we get it in official colors. But, I, 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 but I'm, I'm loving Vegeta's new form. I don't think it's better than Goku and Silver UI, but still, man, I'm loving Vegeta's new form. So you see, Granola goes through the city, crashing the buildings left and right. You see things are tumbling. And Granola, Granola's like, it's like he's an entirely different person. He gets stronger by taking damage, and what's a god of destruction, right? Because Granola doesn't know anything. Granola's not a fighter. Granola's just a guy who made a wish to become the strongest in the universe. He doesn't know anything really about training or, you know, the hierarchy of the gods. He doesn't even understand anything like that. He didn't even know about the Dragon Balls until a couple chapters ago. So we see Vegeta. I love this panel. Vegeta with his, you know, his uh, arms crossed on top of a building. He's like, there's these beings called gods of destructions. Our universe has one. And he's the one who taught me about this power. So, you know, Clicky goes back on his guard because he sees Vegeta, you know, creep crept up behind him. And Bruno was like, so this God granted you this power? And Vegeta's like, did I say that? You know, so Vegeta's like, you clown, I didn't say that. Uh, so Vegeta's like, did I say that? No, this power is my own. Because now Vegeta's come to understand that Granola, you know, Granola's not a fighter. But he uh, he gained this power, but not really through training. You know, he uh, I don't think Vegeta said it last chapter, but basically Vegeta figured out that someone granted Granola this power, most likely the Dragon Balls. I mean, I'm getting tweets from Hearns about Ultra Ego, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, uh, and Vegeta says, our battle has awakened it for the first time, this innate power inside me. So Vegeta did not have this power before, right? He kind of did some of the training for it by, I guess, practicing Hakai on logs and, you know, uh, trees and other items. But it was this battle with Granola and Vegeta letting his battle spirit, right, grow to a level that unlocked this power. So this is kind of what Beerus meant when uh, Beerus was saying, oh, Vegeta, you must reinvent yourself, right? And we're seeing Vegeta reinvent himself in this battle. Bro, damn, look at Vegeta's forehead here without eyebrows. I know I'm not one to really be talking, but golly. <laughs> Yee. Anyway, uh, so Granola's like, you mean I drew out this drink of yours? And I want you guys to remember this line because it does become very critical later on in this chapter. This is a really good chapter. I know I'm repeating myself, but I, I really enjoyed uh, how things connect as, you know, this chapter unfolds. So, so Granoa's like, I drew out this drink of yours? Impossible. Because Granoa doesn't really understand the concept of, you know, how Saiyans grow through battle. That's what Groku and Vegeta do. Right? They grow stronger as a battle unfolds. So Granoa's never heard of that, so he doesn't believe it. So uh, Vegeta's like, yes, precisely. I'm actually grateful for it. 
But uh, Grinnell's like, you're stronger than me. That's impossible. So he fires a key blast at Vegeta. And actually, what's funny here is Grinnell expects Vegeta to dodge. Kind of how Goku would do if he was using Ultra Instinct at this moment. But Vegeta stands there and actually takes it head on. He doesn't try to dodge it, but he takes the key blast head on. And Granola's like, what the hell? And Vegeta's like, good, good. Nothing revs me up more. So Vegeta wants Granola to keep hitting him with key blast. So you can see, like, Vegeta's like, keep hitting me with this, right? Because this is revving up his battle spirit. So we see Granola, he continues to fire these key blasts at Granola. Uh, Granola continues to fire key blasts at Vegeta, and Vegeta just continues taking them, right? And then Vegeta finally uh, comes out of all the smoke, and he goes to attack Granola, and Granola puts up a shield. This is a this is a shield we've seen before. Because remember, Granola's power of the strongest comes with a bunch of different techniques. If you guys remember, back in... If, if, if I remember correctly, it's Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 63, right? Mirrors versus Moro. At, when Mirrors is fighting Moro while all the Z-Vitars are being healed by Dende, Moro uses a shield to kind of shield himself from some of Mirrors' attacks. So Granola has that shield because of the wish, so he basically got that technique from Moro, and he uses that to shield himself from Vegeta's attack. So... Granola asks, why didn't you Jaws? So this isn't like your ally's power-up that makes his body avoid damage. Clearly, he's talking about Goku's Ultra Instinct, right? And Vegeta says, don't you dare, don't you dare compare his pathetic technique to my own. Vegeta powers up, and I love the flames, I love the flames here. And he's like, Kakura's body may have a mind of its own, but I'm all ego. In fact, go ahead and call this Ultra Ego. So this is the English translation of Vegeta's new form. Goku's is Ultra Instinct, right? And in Japanese, that's the mastery of self-movement. That's what the technique actually is, the mastery of self-movement. Vegeta's is Ultra Ego, and I forget what that translates to in Japanese, but it has uh, something to do with egoism. You know, in Japanese, you kind of have to analyze the words a little bit more to find the true meaning. But Vegeta's is a little more on the mental side, having to do with fighting spirit and that equaling fighting, fighting power. And Goku's is more about, you know, the mastery of self-movement, making the body move on its own. So I'm going to do a video once I get all this information together and try to make it, uh, you know, understandable for everybody to uh, understand. But Godot's like ego, you say? So basically, this is Vegeta's version of Ultra Instinct. That's really what this is, all right? So we see Vegeta. I love this panel. Vegeta gets in the stance, right? This reminds me of when Goku was facing Piccolo in the World Tournament back at the end of Dragon Ball. I, lo I love that stance when Goku does the meteor combination. So we see Vegeta get into a similar stance, and he comes flying at Granola. I love this panel here, man. I'm, I'm really starting to love the no eyebrows look for Vegeta. But Vegeta hits Granola with a huge kick. Vegeta overpowers Granola's shield and gets a huge kick to Granola's uh, right side. And we see Granola goes flying through the city, right? And now we see Monito. If you guys remember a couple chapters ago, Monito, who was in his house, he, uh, he felt the battle shaking. So he's come out now and he can see that a battle is taking place in the old city ruins. So Monito's like, thought so. Granola's caught up in some fight. But against who? And Monito says, could it be Frieza? Because Monito knew that Granola made the wish, right? Monito knew that Granola made the wish because he wanted to get revenge on Frieza. He knew that Granola traded in his lifespan and everything. So Mon uh, Monito thinks this could be Frieza. He doesn't know anything about Goku and Vegeta and the Saiyans, right? So hopefully Monito doesn't walk to the battlefield, but I do think Monito's going to play a critical role here as the arc continues to unfold, because the Heater Clan are coming, and we know the Heater Clan wants the Dragon Ball, so it's going to be very interesting. So I would keep an eye on Monito here. So, uh, Granola's like, you aren't even, uh, you aren't even Frieza. There's no way I'll lose to some third-rate Saiyan grunt, because remember, Granola still believes that Goku and Vegeta are... Frieza's soldiers. 
He still believes that. And he believes that Freeze is the big boss. So Granola's like, damn, if I'm struggling this much against Goku and Vegeta, right? People that he believes are supposed to be Frieza's soldiers. How strong could Frieza be as the big boss? Even though Goku and Vegeta have tried to explain to Granola for the last three or four chapters that they don't work for Frieza at all. So this is a big point in this chapter. Vegito's walking up to Granola, and Vegeta's like, I have no idea what tales you've heard, but our home planet Vegeta wasn't wiped out by some enormous meteor strike. It was all Frieza's doing. He destroyed planet Vegeta himself. And you can see Granola has a shocked expression on his face. Vegeta says, the same tribe is yet another push to the brink of extinction by Frieza. And you can see Frieza, uh, Vegeta's look here. He's not smiling. He's not angry. You know, even though Vegeta has accepted the past and accepted what Frieza did all those years ago, still, right, it's still part of his history. He, you know, he was supposed to be the prince of the Saiyans, the future king. And it was wiped out by Frieza. It's one of the main reasons why Vegeta hates Frieza so much. Especially when he was, you know, lied to by Frieza all those years. And he was Frieza's servant doing all of Frieza's dirty work. So, Vegeta here, you know, even though he might not say, Vegeta kind of is probably thinking in his brain, we'll, you know, we'll just open up Granola's eyes. Like, we're the same as you. Our tribe, our people, we're pushed to the brink of extinction by Frieza. So, like, we have something in common. Frieza wiped out both of our races, you know? So, you would think here, oh, you know, if Granola, right, from Granola's perspective, if Vegeta is telling the truth, right, then what's the point of us fighting anymore? Why would I still want revenge on you, you know? Like, I should be working with you to get revenge on Frieza, you know? But Granola here is so addicted to revenge and you can see here, Granola's uh, AI, Oatmeal, and we just found out a couple days ago with the interview that Torotaro had uh, on the Dragon Ball website, it was revealed that Oatmeal is, in fact, an AI. He is an AI, all right? Uh, and his brain is basically in Granola's headset right here. Uh, Oatmeal says, Granola, that contradicts what you were told, right? So Granola did not know the truth about how the Saiyans were extinct. And Granola's like, it doesn't matter. Even if you are telling the truth, there's no reason to call off my revenge. And look, I like Granola a lot as a character. I really do. But it is, it is, it frustrates me that this guy is so obsessed with revenge that he can't see the truth right in front of him. He can't see the truth about the manipulation of the heaters. He can't see the truth that Goku and Vegeta aren't his, aren't, you know, his enemy at the end of the day. You know, he's so obsessed with revenge that he's blind to the truth that's staring him right in front of his eyes. Even Oatmeal, his AI is trying to, you know, get him to open his eyes, and Granola won't listen. So it's frustrating. That, I like Granola as a character, but it's frustrating. And I can see where this is going. The only way Granola is going to believe and truly have his eyes open is when he finds out from the Hida clan themselves that they were manipulating him all those years. Because remember... The Heater Clan worked with Frieza to destroy and wipe out Planet Serio. Right? So I feel so once once Granola finds that L, if he doesn't believe the truth after that, then there's no hope for this guy. Right? Cause I like Granola, but the, the guy, it seems like the only way he's gonna understand the truth and open up his eyes for real is by hearing it from the Heater Clan. And hopefully we'll get that in the next couple of chapters. But we see Granola flies in for a punch. Like I said, man, it's frustrating that Granola won't see the truth. You know? So Granola goes for a punch right on Vegeta's forehead, but Vegeta eats it. Eats it, man. He just eats it. And uh, Vegeta's like, believe what you want, but I speak the truth. And don't think for a second that I want your pity. So Vegeta's just like, I'm just giving you the facts. You know, do whatever you want with this information I told you. But, you know... Know this, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. So, Vegeta hits Granola with a huge bicycle kick, right? Sends Granola flying up into the air. Granola uses his uh, his scarf, right, in like a Spider-Man-like manner. And he uh, puts it around one of the destroyed buildings, basically to uh, 
get his balance back. So, you know, Spider-Man Granola, Spider Granola, you know. So we see Granola lands on top of the building, and uh, we see Oatmeal. Oatmeal tries to communicate with Granola, and he says, it appears that the Saiyans were victims as well. And Granola's like, so what? So once again, you have Granola here blinded to the truth. The truth is staring him in the eyes, and he's blinded to it. Oh, my gosh, bro. Granola's like, so what? That doesn't change the fact that the Saiyans killed my people. And yet, it does not seem that those two were aware of that, right? So, Oatmeal's trying to explain, yes, sure, the Saiyans were, you know, responsible for killing your people. They did it on behalf of Frieza's orders. But Goku and Vegeta had nothing to do with that. They were kids at the time. They had nothing to do with, you know, Planet Serial being wiped out. So, yes, I can understand you want revenge, but what does getting revenge on Goku and Vegeta going to do when they had nothing to do? You know, what, guilty by association? Guilty because they're Saiyans? But they were kids at the time. So you can see, Granola's obsession with revenge is really just, you know, messing with his brain. And we see here... Uh... Granoa gets angry, and he says, enough, oatmeal, and he actually takes off his headpiece, and he throws it down to the ground, and oatmeal's like, hey, what the hell are you doing, and Granoa says, now that I'm the strongest, I don't need your support anymore, so Granoa's like, I don't need you anymore, right, I'll make my own decisions, oatmeal's just trying to help Granola, right, because Granola's letting the revenge consume his mind, and Granola's a good person, He's a good person. He's just obsessed with revenge. But, you know, Granola doesn't want to see the truth. So, Granola gets rid of Oatmeal, right? Throws off his headpiece. And then he goes back down uh, to the battlefield to face Vegeta. And Vegeta's like, ooh, is that red eye the mark of your people? Right? Because, remember, Granola's been wearing the headpiece the entire time. You know, blocking off the red eye. You know, Goku saw the red eye, but Vegeta hasn't. So Vegeta's like, ooh, is that red eye the mark of your people? And Granola's like, you claim that I'm not used to my power. And Vegeta's like, I did. You haven't seen enough battle in your time. And Granola's like, then I'll have to make up for that lack of experience now against you. And Vegeta's like, what? And Granola's like, you're not the only one who grows stronger the more he fights and we see Granola powers up. So that's very interesting. So... Is it in Granola's DNA as a Sorellian that they also grow strong as their fight, as they fight? So do they have a similarity to Saiyans in that way? Or does maybe one of the techniques that Granola got allow him to grow stronger as he battles? Because we do see Granola grow much stronger as the battle continues. So, we see here, uh, Granoa using his telekinesis powers, right? We see here, he grabs a huge building from the ruins of the city. Vegeta's like, what are you doing here? And we see, he throws the building at Vegeta. But Vegeta, in a badass fashion, catches it with one hand. And then, he, uh, he basically, I think he uses a Kai. Well, he doesn't use a Kai. But he does, uh, destroys the building in a couple pieces, you know? And Vegeta's, what's this? So you're willing to destroy this old city now? Vegeta's like, so you don't mind if this city gets completely destroyed? The last memories of your past, right? So now you want to destroy this city? You want to destroy the last memories of your home? So uh, we see Granola doesn't answer Vegeta, but instead he uses his telekinesis again to pick up the pieces that Vegeta just destroyed, and he sends them flying at uh, Vegeta. And it also kind of looks like he uses Hakai here. It looks like, because we know that Granoa does have, you know, a certain level of Hakai. I would argue that Vegeta, since Vegeta trained with God of Destruction Beers, that uh, Vegeta's Hakai is on a much higher level than Granoa's, but uh, Granoa still has access to the technique. So we see, it looks like, it appears that Granola uh, destroys the pieces of the city uh, around him, right, to try to attack Vegeta, but we see uh, Vegeta uh, is still standing. Vegeta was able to guard against the attack. So Vegeta takes this as that Granola will go to any lengths to win this battle, 
right? And Vegeta's like, fine by me, bring it on. And we see Vegeta take off his armor, right? All he has left is like the black, the his black undersuit. So I, I like this, you know? We don't often get to see Vegeta fight in his black undersuit. We don't, you know? Usually he's either fighting shirtless or his, his bat, you know, his battle uh, armor is destroyed to a certain extent. So this is actually really cool. Really, really cool. So basically, this is like them laying it all on the table. So as Vegeta and Granola continue their battle, we see Oatmeal. Oatmeal uh, still, you know, he's not dead or anything, right? He's just not connected to Granola. So uh, Oatmeal's like, really, Granola? Because you can tell that Granola's not really thinking clearly. He's too obsessed by revenge. So we see that Oatmeal, using his AI powers, is able to connect himself back to Granola's ship, and he actually gets Granola's ship off the ground. He flies over to where Granola's headpiece was, and he collects it uh, and brings it back onto the ship, and he flies away. So I, I do think we'll see Oatmeal later on in the arc, right? I don't think this is the last we'll see of Oatmeal, right? I think Oatmeal's just moving the ship, you know, further along until Granoa gets his his act together. Because Granoa's going to need the ship probably at some point, right? Or he'll never be able to get off a uh, planet cereal. So I think Oatmeal will be back probably in a later chapter, right? So it's kind of cool that Oatmeal does have the power to, you know, to, uh, by the power of AI, be able to control Granoa's ship and be able to, you know, fly away to a different location. So we go back to the battle between Vegeta and Granola, and you can see this is a very, very intense battle. Very, very violent, right? And I'm really hoping when, when this gets animated that we get all the blood and violence that this arc has provided us. I'm really liking this. And like I said earlier, this, if I'm being honest, this is a better battle than Goku versus Granola, right? So Vegeta hits Granola with a huge left hand. But Granoa counters with a huge kick, and you can see, you know, it's right back to that vital point. Granoa has been uh, targeting that vital point for the last two chapters, and every time he hits Vegito in that vital point, Vegeta coughs up more blood, right? So then, uh, then we see Vegeta hits Granoa with a sledgehammer, knocking him down, and then we see Vegeta, he checks his uh, chest, and you can see he is bleeding heavily from the chest area because Granola keeps targeting that vital point. But Vegeta's like, no, I'm not done yet, right? I love the way Vegeta's acting here. Vegeta basically, he, 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 it's like he squishes the blood and he's like, let's keep this up. I can grow even stronger. So I'm, I'm loving this battle, man. I'm loving this. Vegeta's relying on his battle spirit to continue to let him grow stronger. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying Vegeta's new form here. And we see Granola fires off a key blast, right? Granola fires off a key blast. And we see Vegeta's barely able to dodge it. Barely able to dodge it. And then we see Granola from the ground's like, oh, so you can dodge after all. Because basically, Vegeta's been taking most of Granola's attacks head on and not trying to dodge them. So, so Vegeta finally dodges or chooses to dodge one of Granola's attack. And Granola's like, so you can dodge after all. So I like that line by Granola. Uh, but Granola's like, or are you hitting your last, or are you hitting your limit at last? And Vegeta, with the confident smile on his face, I love it. He's like, it's unwise to doubt a Saiyan's combat prowess. We live for battle. So as the battle continues, we see Goku, right? And we barely see Goku in this chapter, just like we barely saw Goku last chapter. But we see Goku, he's by a nearby river, and you know, he's trying to, you know, wake himself back up, right? He's been watching the battle from afar. And uh, Goku, he's like, is he for real? Where's that oomph Vegeta had earlier? So Vegeta, So Goku can tell that Vegeta is nearing his limit. You know, he is nearing his limit. Because, you know, with all the vital attacks that he's taken by Granola, Vegeta's taken a significant amount of damage. So, Goku is like, uh, Vegeta, you know, he, he's holding his own, but he's not going to be able to keep this up forever. So, Goku also says, Granola's moves are sharper than ever. 
Is he getting the hang of fighting? So Goku's noticing, even though he's watching the battle from afar, he's noticing that Vegeta is nearing his limit and that Granola's getting fight, uh, stronger and stronger. So Granola's getting uh, more experience in this battle the longer it goes. And Goku realizes that, all right, he might have to get back in the fight soon. Goku's like, yikes, I can't be taking it easy on the sideline forever. So Goku tries healing himself. Goku's like, come on, body, you got to heal for me. And we do know, we do know Goku does have a certain level of healing. He can heal himself. He can't fully heal himself, but he has done it in the past. He doesn't do it often because most of the time he has Dende, right, or Weezed, or the Sensu beans there that get him back to full strength. But Goku can heal himself a little bit. He's done it multiple times throughout the series, right? So they are teasing Goku getting back in the fight. And you see Goku's mainly focusing on his vital spot because that's where Granola hit him hard. So, you know, so Goku's trying to, you know, close up that wound. Remember, this is the same Goku that faced Goku Black in the anime with a hole in his chest. Remember when Zamasu uh, impaled Goku? Or remember when Goku Black impaled uh, Goku, remember, with the sword while going through Zamasu's body? Because remember, Zamasu was immortal. And he gave Goku that huge hole in his chest. Goku got healed, right? And then came back and fought Goku Black and Zamasu again. So, Goku's, you know, Goku's been known for fighting with holes in his chest. So, Goku's going to try to heal himself. And also, remember, Vegeta should have one Sensu being left. Unless somehow uh, Granola destroyed it at some point, Vegeta should have one Sensu being left. So if Goku heals himself, right, to a certain extent, and Vegeta has that one last Sensu being, they might be able to use it. But you can see Vegeta's Gi is getting more and more destroyed as he's taking more and more of Granola's Ki Blast attacks. And we see Vegeta, he counters with a huge Ki Blast wave of his own, Right? And Vegeta's like tenacious worm. And you can see Vegeta is nearing his limit. And he's holding his own, but he is nearing his limit. His vision is starting to blur because he's taking a lot of damage. Vegeta is relying too much on his body's ability to grow stronger as his fighting, as his fighting spirit grows. His body's taking too much damage to the, to the point where... He's not going to be able to grow much stronger because his body needs to heal and recuperate. So Vegeta's like vision blurring. I've taken too, uh, I've taken far too much damage. And we see Granola. He's sitting there. He's in the Hawkeye position, just like he did last chapter. And I like this. Granola looks badass here. This is very very badass. Uh, Vegeta's like curse him. Still standing and ready to fight. I'll have to end this now. So Vegeta powers up to his limit and he gets into a stance and he fires off a huge key blast, a huge key blast ball. So Vegeta fires off a huge key blast ball, right? Kind of looks like a spirit bomb, but it's a key blast uh, ball. And, uh, Basically, Vegeta's using the power of Hakai. So this this reminds me a lot of the attacks that Topo was using in the Tournament of Power when he was fighting Seventeen, fighting Frieza, and fighting uh, Evolution Vegeta. So we see Vegeta has the attack ready to go. He's like, this will destroy anything it touches. You want to protect your precious planet? Then you better stop this yourself. And Granola's sitting there ready to go. He's like, okay, bet. Let's do it. So basically, Vegeta looks like He's ready to end the battle with, you know, the power of Hakai. And I don't know if Vegeta was truly trying to destroy Planet Serial here, right? Because clearly Vegeta says, this will destroy anything it touches. So it would destroy, uh, you know, Planet Serial. But maybe Vegeta was not really planning to destroy the entire planet. Maybe he just wanted to, you know, destroy a little small part of the planet. You know, using just enough power to defeat Granola in the process. So... Uh, Vegeta fires off the attack, right? And maybe some will argue that this is just Vegeta letting the God of Destruction power get through his head too much. But, you know, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So Vegeta fires off the attack, and he's like, oh, you're a brave one. 
then this will be your doom. And he fires off the ball. But right at that moment, we see uh, Granoa's eye turn red as well. And I, I don't really know what this means. This is not Ultra Instinct. It's not Ultra Instinct because the eyes were to turn silver. But we see Granoa's other eye turns red as well. Right? And, you know, I, this could be Granoa turning into, like, a Super Cerulean. Maybe, you know, uh, Cerulean's have, like, their own version of Super Saiyan. I don't know. But, you know, if Granoa's eye is turning red, it probably has something to do with the, his Cerulean DNA. Right, but we're gonna need to have this explained to us a little bit more. But this is Granoa, you know, surpassing his limit, right, and growing in battle. So we see Granoa now with his eyes red. He uh he does kind of like the Finn Balor, you know, for my wrestling fans over there when you know Finn Balor does his stance, he has you know the fingers ready in position, and he's like, eat this, and he destroys Vegeta's attack. And Vegeta is in shock. So he destroys Vegeta's attack. And you can see a huge, huge explosion takes place on the planet. Look at that. You can see it across the entire planet. Everybody feels it. A huge attack. You can see Goku. You can see, uh, you can see Oil, Monito, Oatmeal, who is guiding uh, Granola's ship. Everybody feels the effects on that attack. Right? And we see a huge... There's debris everywhere. We come back, and Vegeta's down on the ground. He's not defeated. That's the key thing I want you guys to remember. Vegeta's not defeated. He's not back in his base form. So, yes, Vegeta is damaged. He is at his limit, but he is not defeated yet. This is why I went on that little rant at the beginning of the video. Uh, uh, of the video. Because everybody was going off talking about, oh, Vegeta lost, right? He's not defeated here yet. The battle's not over. But still, it looks like Granoa has overpowered and made up the power gap between him and Vegeta. So Granoa, man, this guy's on another level. We thought, I thought personally, that Granola's wish would only make him the strongest in the universe for that moment in time. And that Goku and Vegeta, through training, would be able to make up that difference and surpass Granola again. But, Granola breaks his limits here, and it looks like he has surpassed God of Destruction Vegeta. So, uh, Vegeta's like, damn it, how did he... So, what the hell happened? So, uh, so we see Granola walking towards uh, Vegeta, and Granola's like, I have to thank you, Saiyan. You're responsible for drawing out this power of mine. So Granola has surpassed his limits, similar to how Goku and Vegeta surpassed their limits in battle. And now he has made up that power gap. And, you know, it looks like he has surpassed Vegeta. So Granola had the upper hand last chapter. Vegeta, when, you know, he unlocked his new form, right? Vegeta surpassed Granola. But it seems like Granola has surpassed his limits and surpassed Vegeta again. Basically, Granoa taking the logic of the Saiyans and applying it to himself. So, whatever. It looks like we didn't really understand the full extent of that wish. Granola's wish, man. Woo! It, it made him into something. It made him into something. So, we finally go back to the Heater Clan. This is the first time that we've seen the Heater Clan in, like, three chapters. We've seen, you know, Oil. He's been keeping his eyes on the battle. But... Uh, for the most part here, the Heater Clan, we, we haven't seen them. And everyone's been asking, oh, when are the Heater Clan going to make their move, right? So we see, uh, so we see Elec, we see Gas, or not Gas, we see, yeah, we see Elec, we see Gas, and uh, I forget the name of the, the female here. And uh, she's like, hey, Oyo, you want to explain that crazy explosion just now? I mean, are you okay? What the heck was that? And... Oil's like, I'm in one piece, but it was just Granola fighting back. And Elec's like, ooh, I'm impressed. I was sure Granola would lose this fight soon, but I guess the battle's still undecided. And she's like, uh, I think her name is Malik. Malik. I think that's her name. And she's like, yep, those three can keep wearing each other down. And Elec's like, just as we planned then, they'll wipe each other out. And... Uh, we see Gas come out, and Gas is like, all good with this device too, Elec. We're about to reach the first location. Good. 
I cannot wait to lay eyes upon these so-called Dragon Balls that grant any wish. So we see the Heater Clan are making their move. They are on Planet Serial finally. And it looks like they are going to go after the uh, the Dragon Balls on Planet Serial. So the Heater Clan are there. We don't know what their wish is. We don't know what their wish is. We know that Alec believes that having the most information and having the most knowledge is his version of being the strongest. But there's still a lot of unanswered questions. But the Heater Clan are making their move. That is something to watch out for. So, the battle between Granola and Vegeta is not done yet. But it does look like Granola has the upper hand. So, it's going to be interesting. If Vegeta still has that Sensu Bean, he can heal himself. Right? And we know that Goku's trying to heal himself too. So... Next chapter, it's going to be very, very interesting. Will Goku team up with Vegeta? Could we see Ultra Instinct Goku and God of Destruction Vegeta or Ultra Eagle Vegeta, whatever you want to call it? Will we see Goku and Vegeta team up to take Granola down? Could we see Fusion? Me personally, as much as I love Fusion, I just don't want to see it right now. I like the concept of Goku and Vegeta growing on their own. Right? And I would save if you want to use save Gogeta for maybe later in the arc or for a later time, that's fine. But for right now with this battle with Granola, I don't I don't want to see Gogeta yet. I don't want to see it. I like the idea of Goku and Vegeta continuing to grow in their battle with Granola. But in my opinion, I would not be surprised. I think it's likely because Goku's healing himself right now. Vegeta should still have that Sensu Bean. So I think next chapter we're going to see Goku and Vegeta potentially have to team up to go up against Granola. Because this guy is a beast. Granola is a beast, right? And I think also next chapter we're going to see the Heater Clan collecting the Dragon Balls. Will the Heater Clan, you know, uh, cross paths with Monito? That will also be very interesting. That will be interesting as well. So you can see, you know, it looks like we're kind of transitioning ourselves into another stage of this arc. The last three or four chapters have been mainly Goku and Vegeta going up against Granola. But now the Heater Clan, they are collecting the Dragon Balls. So I think we could be transitioning to a pivotal point. I think we could be reaching the climax of this arc soon, right? Potentially Goku and Vegeta maybe teaming up with Granola against the Heater Clan. Maybe Frieza appears. I don't know. But I am I'm enjoying this a lot. I'm going to be honest. I like the slow pacing. This chapter was really, really good in my opinion. I really enjoyed the battle with Vegeta and Granola. And for all those idiots out there that were mad that Vegeta lost, he hasn't lost yet. He's not defeated. He's not defeated. So technically, he hasn't lost yet. It is likely that maybe next chapter Vegeta does lose to Granola, but he didn't lose in this chapter. He still transformed. So we have to wait and see what happens, right? So, for all those idiots out there that were mad or saying, oh, yeah, I'm done with the manga, you guys are idiots. You guys are idiots. This is why I say wait for the full chapter to release. And in my opinion, this was a great chapter. This was a great chapter, and I cannot wait to see where this goes. Will it be Goku and Vegeta versus Granoa next chapter? Will it be the Heater Clan finally stepping onto the battlefield? Who knows, but I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this, and I cannot wait to see what happened so this was a great chapter in my opinion so let me know guys in the comment section what you guys thought what was your favorite moment of the chapter where you guys think this is going man give me guys your prediction as always guys i'm gonna get out of here you guys leave a like on the video i will have more videos about where i think this arc is going so make sure you guys have notifications enabled by clicking the bell right my name is TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Make sure to follow me down on social media. The links are in the description down below. Thank you guys, as always, for everything. I'll see you guys later. You guys stay safe and healthy. Peace.